What's going on guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel and as always, happy Friday. We're here today for another episode of the Dragon Empires, a five minute tour today at the request of Lou Gildenach. I hope I pronounced that right, my friend, truly. We'll be covering Tianjin. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, remember, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and if you have any requests for this series, throw them in the comments. Real quick though, we've got yet another new patron to announce today, this episode of the Dragon Empires, a five minute tour, was brought to you in part by 360, 360 Max, Max Gamer. 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 My friend, thank you so much for your support and having a wonderful name. Now, let's dive in. So a long, long time ago, a host of holy beings from the good aligned plains fought in a great war against the tide of ancient evil, a clippeth horde that threatened to infest the material plane. The celestial host swung the tide of the long war and secured victory, but at great cost. They suffered enormous losses in the war and were not able to properly repair the rifts between the deepest reaches of the abyss and the material plane in order to guard forevermore against the return of the Klippeth, the Archons, Azadas, Agathians, and Angels who had fought side by side, accepted exile into the Material Plane. They settled in the land that would come to be known as Tianjing, and as humans rose in power, the Celestials welcomed the best of them into their guarded lands. In time, the Celestials saw their descendants had grown numerous enough to take over a defense of the land from them, and they finally returned home to the Outer Plains leaving the land of Tianjin in the capable hands of their Azimar children. As human empires rose and fell, the land of Tianjin always treated with them fairly and greeted them with open arms. Those who accepted these offerings of peace were allowed to wander among Tianjin's many temples and utopian landscapes, but those who sought instead to conquer and control found the Azimar nation, as peaceful as it seemed, incredibly difficult to take. These Azimars were charged with protecting the realm from ancient horrors from before the time of the gods themselves. What worry was it to guard their borders against mere mortals? Tianjin was one of the few existing nations that Lunghua, we'll talk more about them later, in a surprising show of restraint and wisdom allowed to exist without attempting to overtake, for the emperor at the time rightfully concluded that to undertake war against a backdrop of such beauty and wonder would surely damn him and his people to hell. Indeed, he adopted almost the reverse of the philosophy Lung Hua had for other lands. Rather than invade and conquer, he sent support to Tianjin in the form of food, art, and anything else he felt the Azimars might desire. Those Azimars were ill-prepared when Lung Hua crumbled. The many centuries of support from Lung Hua had allowed Tianjin to abandon self-support in favor of the pursuit of art and philosophy, and it now found itself alone and without a steady source of food and protection, bordered by the aggressive successor states and indifferent neighbors with problems of their own. Tianjin increasingly found itself assaulted by small but eager bands of bandits, exiled armies, you name it. And for the first time since the ancient wars with the Klippeth, its cities and wilds were stained with the blood of warfare. Tianjin's salvation came in the form of a compelling and enigmatic young Azimar woman by the name of Sulunai. Hers was the voice of reason during a time of chaos, and she single-handedly brought about Tianjin's salvation. Today the nation is well on the way to recovering, yet this recovery has had an unforeseen ripple. In defending themselves from banditry and invading armies, and then in recovering, their self-sufficiency and restoring their cities, the people of Tianjin have neglected their duties to guard the ancient portals to the deep abyss. So long had the threat of the Klippeth been quelled that the ancient warnings were all but forgotten, and today, while outwardly presenting a facade of beauty and light, Tianjin fights an increasingly desperate battle within itself. So yeah, if you feel the need to break out the Klippeth in your games or have just a bunch of Celestials running all over the place, Right there, Tianjin is your answer in the Dragon Empires. There's not a whole lot of places on Galerion that have a beautiful facade presented on the outside, but dark and evil battles going on from within, certainly not angels versus Clippeth. So if I were to GM in Tianjin, that's exactly what's going on. The players are brought in, the players see a beautiful land of temples and ancient paintings and works of art and things of that nature. Then one day there's a disturbance and they wake up and some lesser Klippeth have invaded the inn they're staying at and suddenly 
they've all been roped into the defense of the land of Tianjing. And now I kind of want to play that, I'm not going to lie. Anyway, like all places on Galerion, Tianjing does have a real world equivalent. It's going to seem like a little bit of a cop out because really like four or five of the places in the Dragon Empires, if not more, fall into this category. But Tianjing is definitely ancient China with influence from the various folk religions from China itself. If nothing else, one can equate the Eastern philosophy that the emperors were divine with the children of Tianjing being Azimars, you know, the children of divine beings ruling over a beautiful heavenly land. But what do you guys think about Tianjing? Would you go fight some Clippeth here? Would you feed your players to some Clippeth here? And what do you want to see next for all of Tian Sha in Pathfinder, specifically in Pathfinder 2nd Edition? Hey, on the subject of that, if you're playing 2nd Edition, and you'd like to play it on Fantasy Grounds, we're giving away one copy of Fantasy Grounds Ultimate Edition. One copy is good enough for you and all of your players. If that might interest you, follow this card right up here to be directed to the giveaway. And remember, patronage at any tier grants you a second entry. That's all we have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. The next episode of The Dragon Empire is a five-minute tour where we cover whatever gets in the comments first to tell you the truth so if you've got something again throw it in there drops next friday 